Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This episode is going to be a binocular tour of the winter sky. I'm making this video at the request of one of the viewers, Bill. I'll be using 10 by 42 binoculars because these are my best binoculars, but you can use 7 by 50, 10 by 50, like these Nikon Pro Staff ones, or even big ones like this 15 by 70 binoculars. Any of those will work on the objects we're going to be looking at tonight. And you can hand hold your binoculars, but you'll be more comfortable and able to see more if you stabilize them on a tripod with one of these adapters that goes on the top of the tripod and connects to your binoculars or a tripod specifically made for binoculars, especially if you're gonna be using 15 by 70s. So get your tripod and your binoculars ready and a lounge chair if that's more comfortable for you. And before you start, let's wipe your lens down with the magic cloth and make sure your lens is clean. And also let's set your diopter if you have one. That's this little tick mark on the back of the right lens um, that is if your eyesight is not even like me and one eye is worse than the other. What you want to do is you point your binoculars at an object and you cover the right lens with your hand and you focus with just your left eyepiece with the focus wheel. And when it's nice and focused, then you want to cover the lens on the left with your hand or the cap and get the object focused in the right lens by using the diopter wheel and once it's nice and focused in both now you're all set now just bring the two close enough together so that you only have one image um, and then we're all set to get started we're going to be looking at deep sky objects in the milky way and outside of the milky way we'll be looking at the following constellations, Orion, Monoceros, Canis Major, Canis Minor, Puppis, Gemini, Auriga, and Cancer. So if you need to refresh on how to find these constellations, you can watch my videos on the constellations of autumn and winter. And here's the link. So when it's dark, I'll come back and we'll get started. If you don't have a fancy binocular tripod like this one, which is very convenient, but kind of bulky. And your binoculars won't accept the adapter, then just prop it on something to stabilize it. And that will help a lot. You can hand hold it, but your hand's gonna shake, especially if you're observing for a while. And another thing I forgot to mention is if you're having trouble finding anything, you can use a planisphere, like this big guide to the stars. Um, this is a very nice planisphere and it has almost all the objects I'm gonna be talking about, except for a few of the star clusters in the Milky Way next to Puppis. Other than that, it has everything else. Or you can use a simple um, star chart like the Deep Map 600 that Orion makes. It has everything I'm going to be talking about. Remember with your planisphere that you have the bottom of the planisphere, the direction should say the direction you're facing. So if you're facing south, it should say face south at the bottom, just in case you didn't know, and then put the correct time and date. Okay, uh, we're just about ready to get started. Also, I wanted to tell you, and this was very confusing to me when I was just starting out, but when you're looking in the sky, east is west and west is east. So if I say something is east, then um, it's the opposite of what it would be on Earth. So if you were looking at a star chart and say you're looking at Sirius, and something's to the left of Sirius, that's going to be east of Sirius. Okay, we're ready to start. Of course, any tour of the winter sky has to start with Orion, the hunter. So let's find Orion with your naked eye. And once you've found Orion, we're going to start with his sword. 
So the, his sword uh, dangles down from the three belt stars. So find that with your naked eye. And then once you've found it with your naked eye, then get your binoculars on his sword. Orion's sword is two degrees. So you'll be able to fit the entire sword in your binoculars. But we're going to start at the top. And so center the top of his belt in your binoculars. And once you have the top of his sword in your binoculars, uh, most binoculars have a five degree field of view. So that's why I said his whole sword would fit. We're going to start with NGC 1981, an open star cluster of magnitude 4.2, 1300 light years away that resembles a small W. Okay. Just below the small W, we're going to look at NGC 1977, a cluster surrounded by a nebula that's about magnitude 4 and it's 1600 light years away. From there, we're going to drop down about one half a degree to probably the most spectacular deep sky object in the sky, the Great Orion Nebula, M42, magnitude 3, 1300 light years away. Take your time exploring this beautiful nebula. Wow. And for extra bonus and challenge, see if you can make out the four brightest stars in the middle of the Orion Nebula, known as the trapezium. There are four stars ranging from magnitude 5.1 to magnitude 7.5, and they are all part of a multiple star system. When you're finished ooing and eyeing over Orion, we're going to drop down to the bottom of the sword, just a half a degree south of the Great Orion Nebula, to Iota Orionis. It's an attractive triple star, with the brightest star being magnitude 3. The two other stars are magnitude 7 and 9, so you may not be able to make them out, but see if you can at least make out the brighter companion star at magnitude 7, that's to the southeast, 11 arc seconds. Just to the southwest of Iota Orionis is a wide double star, Struve 747. The pair are blue-white, and you should be able to separate them at magnitude 4.8 and 5.7, and 36 arc seconds apart. Next, we're going to drop down even farther south to the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius the brightest star in Canis Major. Once you've found Sirius with your naked eye, then we will drop down about four degrees south of Sirius to M41, a beautiful bright open cluster, 2300 light years away and magnitude 4.5. Some people call this the Little Beehive Cluster. It's been known since antiquity, although its discovery is attributed to Hoderna in 1654. It contains about a hundred stars and many of them are red giants. Next we're going to a very dim constellation, Monoceros, that you probably won't be able to make out because its stars are not very bright. But that's okay because the object we're looking for is an easy target for binoculars and it's easy to find because it's uh, halfway between Sirius, the brightest star in Canis Major, and Procyon, the brightest star in Canis Minor, which is, uh, that star is 0.34, so Procyon is a pretty bright star, and Sirius, Procyon, and Betelgeuse, which is the red star that's Orion's shoulder, make an upside-down isosceles triangle. So once you've located Procyon, about 25 degrees north of Sirius, now you can point your binoculars one-third of the way between Procyon and Sirius to the beautiful open cluster M50, magnitude 5.9, with about 100 stars. Below M50 and Monoceros is the dim constellation Puppis, the stern. You might not be able to make out Puppis if you are looking from a light-polluted area or you have an obstructed uh, view 
because it's kind of low, but that's okay. You can just put your binoculars back on Sirius and from there, 10 degrees south of Sirius and five degrees east of M41, the open cluster we're looking at, and on the right side of your field of view, you should be able to see two small clusters, NGC 2383, and just below that, NGC 2367, and four degrees southeast of those, the small open cluster M93, an open cluster 3,200 light years away and magnitude six. There are many clusters in this area of the sky, which is part of the Milky Way, and it's rich in clusters suitable for binoculars. So feel free to wander around in puppets if you can see it for a while before we move on. Wow. Next, we're going to go above Orion to Gemini, the twins. To find Gemini, first find Orion and draw a line from Rigel, his foot, through Betelgeuse, his shoulder, to where you see two bright stars, Castor and Pollux, about four degrees apart. And you should be able to make out the two stick figures that make up this constellation. What we're looking for is the foot of the upper stick figure of the twins. If you can get his foot in your binoculars just two and a half degrees northwest, you'll find the spectacular large open cluster M35, beautiful in binoculars, containing hundreds of stars. It's 2,800 light years away, and at magnitude 5.3, it's a great binocular object. After you've enjoyed M35 for a while, next we're going to, to look for Auriga. Auriga will be high in the sky, well above Orion and Gemini. Auriga has a very bright star, Capella, at magnitude zero, and the shape of the constellation is a pentagon. Inside Auriga are three beautiful open star clusters, M36, M37, and M38. The easiest to locate is M36, it's on the eastern side of the Pentagon, the opposite side from Capella. M36 is magnitude six and 4,000 light years away. M37 is just outside of the Pentagon and is magnitude 5.6 and 4,400 light years away. M38 is the dimmest of the three at magnitude 6.4 and it's above M36. They will both easily fit within the same binocular field of view. After enjoying these three beautiful clusters for a while, next we're going to end with a very dim constellation that you are not going to be able to see, but with a very famous object. To find it, we aren't even gonna look for this dim constellation because the stars are just too dim. Instead of looking for Cancer the Crab, it is on the ecliptic, let's go back to the twins, Castor and Pollux, and 10 degrees below and to the east, you'll find an easy open cluster visible to the naked eye, the famous Beehive Cluster M44. It's in between Procyon and Pollux, but 10 degrees or so to the east, you should be able to see it with the naked eye, even from a light polluted area. And then put your binoculars on it. It's magnitude 3.7, 577 light years away, and it's spectacular in binoculars. That concludes Binocular Tour of the Winter Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. <laughs>